Don't touch that dial. I think it would be a good idea if everybody turned off the radios. Because Full Moon is going to take you on a sci-fi rock and roller coaster ride with bad channels. Action! It was an incredible stroke of luck and casting genius to get MTV VJ Martha Quinn for the lead role of feisty reporter Lisa Cummings. All by myself here working on what could be the biggest story in history flip. For most of the movie, I'm very offended at all the wrongdoings going on. And there's one scene just slightly before all the wrongdoings ensue where I see the first, um, or I'm looking for the UFO that I've seen and I'm all happy and all excited. So I like that scene because it's the one time I get to be happy and excited instead of just really mad. Well, I'm a big fan of Martha's, you know. I've been watching MTV for years now and I frankly have a crush on her. We love Martha. She's a talented, a gifted, gifted actress. She's up there with uh, Merle Sheep and all of them. Mostly what I've been reacting to in horror is either the director going like this, OK, this is the monster over here. It's the director! <laughs> or a piece of tape, you know, that's labeled fungus. You know the song, The Mighty Quinn, by, uh, what was the name? <laughs> Bob Dylan. Bob Dylan wrote Mighty Quinn, that's right. Manfred Mann also did it, but it's about her. She had, wasn't born yet, but he knew she was coming. We just got buzzed by a UFO. No. I've got to get my camera. Ma maybe it was some Air Force deal or something. Oh, yeah. Air Force from another planet. Oh, Jesus, this is great. A real story. I'm right in the middle of it. Yes! Woo! I think the, the most fun thing about Bad Channel is that it sort of combined three things that I love most. UFOs, rock and roll, and comedy. He's a very, very talented man. I, I idolize him. I worship him. He's... I can't say enough about... Uh, what's his name? Ted. 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 What's his last name? Nicolau. Nick. Nicolau. Whatever. He's a great guy. Mark. That great guy, Ted Nicolau, also directed okay. Terror Vision and Full Moon's okay. Subspecies. Okay. The wall? Lisa! <gasps> Dad! Lisa! Dad! Jars on the floor. <laughs> Quick, take this. Got it. Blue Oyster Cult is going to do the uh, score, actually. It's going to be very interesting, I think. The soundtrack's going to have the overtones of rock and roll mixed in with, you know, more traditional kind of uh, science fiction sound soundtrack. Clear channel or not, there'll be no more rock and roll on Superstation 66. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, You'll never hear another tube horn on its frequency again. After starring in the Buddy Holly story on Broadway and London's West End, Paul Hipp comes to Hollywood as dangerous Dan O'Dare. on the air! There's no business like show business like no business I know. Dan is kind of the wild man of rock and roll. In this movie, I think that it's interesting. I mean, it's like a sci-fi movie, but I think it's interesting what happens to Dan because he goes through a transformation sort of from, from, from uh, like a huckster to a hero. It takes this little journey for this guy from being a real scumbag to being a, a, a hero, a human being. Who'd have thunk it when I was a little boy growing up in Philadelphia that one day I would grow up and be in Hollywood killing aliens with Lysol? It's a dream come true. And how about those aliens? Especially Lump, who looks a little like R2-D2. Yeah, he's his third cousin, actually. Came from the same factory. 
that's that his uh, running joke on the show, because he, he does bear a resemblance. But uh, he doesn't like to admit to that relation of the family. We used a variety of materials. Essentially, he's built like a real robot. He's metal, aluminum, uh, a lot of plastics. Yeah, we've got a brain in there that pulses. Uh, and he needs a gruesome end at some point during the film. And serving lump as lumps is the monster core of the alien cosmo. Special effects designer and creator Greg Aronowitz Give me a big kiss. is very affectionate with his monstrous offspring. No tongue. There you. Inside, he's got a, a variety of mechanical armatures, and we didn't want to be limited to any one thing, so we're using all kinds of stuff. We got a radio controlled head, and we got a cable controlled neck. Um, we're putting some final touches on the amorphous Cosmo here. Painting his eyes. One thing we did with this creature was stay in close touch with the director, Ted, and the production designer, Cecily. And we worked out the design and the color scheme and made my job real easy. Trying to keep the colors real bright on him so that he stands out in the dark set. And even though he's a monster, he still has to have kind of a sympathetic look. Look at him some pretty brown eyes. Inside some of Full Moon's most horrifying monsters and terrifying space aliens you will often find. Mike Deek. Ah, well, as you can see, I am the alien. I play Cosmo in the film. Uh, I get to wear this fine-looking um, fungus head there on the set the whole time. I think it was sort of typecasting. Since uh, this alien does come down to take over a rock and roll station, they needed someone to be alien to rock and roll, so they figured they'd hire a guy that only listens to Frank Sinatra and Dean Martin. Perfect for the part, right? What you are seeing is not another monster from bad channels. You are experiencing the members of Psychotic Symphony. And the interesting thing about these guys is that they wear their masks off stage as well as on stage. So we had the strange experience of going up and shaking hands and kind of making the initial deal with them, speaking to these guys in these strange masks, one with big cheeks and barf kind of blowing out of his mouth. And uh, <laughs> it was a unique experience trying to be serious while talking to these guys. They proved to be really interesting and uh, fascinating guys, and they really approached the film with their with complete energy and really gave us a lot of great material to work with. The symphony certainly had a strange effect on Nurse Ginger. That was crazed, I must say. They were maniacs, and they were very proud of my my wildness that overtook me, I don't know how. Just the music went and so did I. That's what they wanted, wildness, and I did it. And uh, I was so sore. It's distracting, isn't it? Also performing in Bad Channels is DMT. We wanted one band that was like sort of cutting edge uh, hard rock, and I was a little apprehensive that they were gonna get into this scene that we had constructed around them, which involved cheerleaders and marching bands and El Canoga Park High School uh, cheerleading and band, and they actually got into it. Another band rocking out in bad channels is Fair Game. We were looking for an all-girl band, too, and Dean found this band called Ron Keel and Fair Game. And Ron Keel is uh, actually not a girl, he's a guy, but he's been around for a long time on the Los Angeles music scene and has assembled this band of uh, female uh, instrumentalists. 
and they're all really great. If you look closely, you will see Full Moon spokesperson and star of Meridian and Puppet Master 2, Charlie Spradling, playing a rockin' waitress. I was never, I've never been a waitress, and I kept spilling the tray, it kept falling, and we kept having to retake everything because every time we started, this tray would spill because I didn't know how to balance a tray on my hands. So it was interesting. <gasps> Being the Full Moon poster girl has made Charlie very popular with Full Moon fans. Oh, I get lots of fan mail from all you guys. I read them all. All of them. They all get to me. 10,000 calls an hour? Pull the plug in the station, Sheriff. Cut the power right now. What do you mean, pull the plug? You can't do that. Not with those demographics. What is the perfect equation for another Full Moon classic? Horrifying aliens, beautiful women, and great rock and roll. Is that in this? Bad channels.